What is going on everybody? In this video, I need to explain while loops in Java. If I could summarize a while loop in one sentence, a while loop will repeat some code forever while some condition remains true. First, I'll give you a demonstration using an if statement, then we'll convert it to be a while loop and we'll see how it's useful. We'll need to accept user input in this demonstration. I will create a scanner. I'm pretty sure we know how to create one by now. Be sure to import the scanner class, import java.util.scanner. Then be sure to close your scanner because I always forget to do that. All right. We are going to create a string of name. I'll use an if statement to check to see if my name is empty. If name, use the is empty method. Now Java wants us to assign this name right away. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize it. We can initialize it with an empty space. If our name is empty, which it will be, we will prompt the user to enter your name. I'll use print instead of print line to keep it on the same line. Then we will assign our variable of name. Name equals scanner dot next line. After we escape the if statement, we'll output our name. Let's say hello plus name. So this program will work, but there's one issue. What if I don't type in anything when I enter my name? I'll just hit enter. Well, we still continue with the rest of the program. The output is hello. We don't display a name because we didn't type in anything. How can we prevent people from doing stuff like this? Skipping prompts. Well, we could use a while loop. Rather than an if statement, replace if with while. What we're doing is while this condition remains true, continue this code forever until this condition is no longer true. Let's try that again. Enter your name. I'm just going to hit enter. Enter your name. No. Enter your name. No. Enter your name. No. Okay, I give up. I'll type in my name. Then we escape the while loop. Hello, your name. So that's why a while loop is useful. We can repeat some code, possibly forever. At times, we may not want a user to continue without doing something. A while loop would be really helpful for that. They would be stuck until this condition is no longer true. At the end of your while loop, we go back to the beginning to check the condition. If the condition is no longer true, then we escape the while loop and move on with the rest of the program. There's one thing you should be cautious of, though, and that is an infinite loop. Let me give you a demonstration. With our while loop, if we have a condition that we can't change from within the loop, that's called an infinite loop. So let's say while the number one is equal to one, even my IDE IntelliJ is giving me a warning that one is equal to one is not updated inside the loop. I would not recommend following me along for this part. Your computer might freeze up, but I'm going to print help. I'm stuck in a loop. Within this while loop, I have no way to change it from inside of it. So we're going to be stuck in this while loop forever. Here's a demonstration. We're just going to print this code forever. Let's check back later. One eternity later. It's still going. We're stuck in a loop. This may happen to you if you have some condition that you can't change. Within your while loop, you'll need some way to update your condition. Let me give you another example. Again, we'll need our scanner. We're going to pretend that we're playing a game. For a user to quit, they have to press the Q key. We will declare a string of response. We'll use a while loop. Now for my condition, for us to be able to escape the while loop, our response I'm going to use the not logical operator equals a capital Q, and this will be a string. So while our response does not equal Q, we continue the loop forever. In order for somebody to escape this game, they have to press Q to quit. Java wants me to assign this variable right away and initialize it, so I'll do so. We don't want our variable to be empty when we use it to check a condition. Then IntelliJ is giving us another warning that our response is not updated inside the loop. 
If we don't update it, we'll be stuck in an infinite loop. Let's pretend that we're playing a game. You are playing a game. Then we'll output press Q to quit. Then we will need to update our response. Response equals use our scanner. For single character, we can use next. In case somebody types in a lowercase q, we'll follow this method with the to uppercase method. If a user was to type in a lowercase q, we'll convert it to be an uppercase q so that it matches. Once we escape the while loop, we'll print you have quit the game. Okay, let's perform a test run. You are playing a game, press Q to quit. No. Yes. Okay. As long as our response does not equal Q, we are still playing our imaginary game. In order for us to quit, to escape the while loop, we have to press Q to quit. I will press Q, and we escape the loop. You have quit the game. While our response, using the not logical operator, while our response does not equal Q, continue the loop forever. Let's go over another example. We'll ask a user for their age. Int age, I will set this to be zero right away will prompt a user to enter in their age. Enter your age. We will assign our age variable. Age equals scanner dot next int. Then at the end of this program, I will print you are our variable age plus years old. Let's say I would like to prevent somebody from typing in a negative number, like negative 1. You are negative 1 years old. Well, we could use a while loop to reprompt the user before displaying the result. So after we assign our age once, let's use a while loop. While age is less than 0, we'll output the following. Your age can't be negative. Then we'll reprompt the user again. We can just copy these two lines and then paste them within the while loop. We'll ask the user to enter in their age again and reassign it. If we keep on typing negative numbers, we can't escape the while loop. We're stuck until we type in something that's valid. You are 21 years old. That's a valid number. From the beginning, if I type in something that's valid, we don't enter the while loop at all. It is possible to skip over it. We check the condition of a while loop before entering it. If we type in a number that's valid, let's say age is 25, we check the condition. It's false from the beginning, so we don't enter the while loop at all. We skip over it and go straight to the end. In this program, we only get caught in the while loop if we type in user input that's not valid. There's a variation of the while loop known as a do while loop. We do some code first and then check the condition. If I was to convert this code to be a do while loop, I would cut the while part, do this code, then check the condition at the end. This is how the program would run now. It's going to be a little bit different. Your age can't be negative. Enter your age. I am negative 100 years old. Your age can't be negative. Enter your age. You are, whatever your age is, years old. So with the do while loop, we do this code first and then check the condition at the end. Where it's different compared to a standard while loop is that with the standard while loop, you may not enter the while loop at all if this condition is false. But with the do while loop, you always do this code at least once, and then check the condition at the end. Let's go over one last example with the do while loop. 
will prompt a user to type in a number that's between a certain range. We will have int number, and I will assign this to be zero right away. Let's use a basic while loop first. While our number is less than one, we'll use the or logical operator to check, or if our number is greater than 10, then do this. Prompt the user to enter a number between 1 through 10. Then we will assign our variable of number equals use our scanner, use the next int method. And then at the end, we will print our number. You picked plus number. So let's run this. Our number is set to zero. Enter a number between one and 10. Let's do negative one, 11, negative two, one kajillion. I think I broke it. Okay, I'll type in something that's valid, like five. You picked five. Rather than check the condition from the beginning, we could check it at the end. So let's convert the while loop to a do while loop. Do this code once and then check the condition. So this would work similarly. So do this code once, check the condition at the end. All right, everybody, so those are while loops. They allow you to execute some code, possibly forever, while some condition remains true. They're really useful when accepting user input because the user might not type in something that's valid and you have to keep on reprompting them. That's one good use. There's two variations of while loops, a standard while loop and a do while loop. It depends if you want to check the condition before entering the loop. And well, everybody, those are while loops in Java.